Painting, reflecting, reasoning, reckoning. It is 18 to 6 on the huddle this evening. Uh, Josie Pagani is with me. Hello, Josie. Hi, Larry. And uh, we have Cameron uh, Slater from Whale Oil. Hello, Cameron. Hey, Larry. Good to talk to you. Josie, to you first. Uh, well, the unions had their march uh, against the ports of Auckland uh, and what has been happening there. That was on, when was that, Saturday? Was it Saturday? I think it was. Um, it was Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Labour teachers, nurses, they all supported um, their, their, their friends, their comrades, whatever. Mayor Brown had a, a talk to them today. Um, nothing has changed. The workers remain sacked in their contracting out the work. How do you see it now, Josie? Well, I think what's interesting is on Saturday you had a lot of people turning up to that, that rally and really the issue changed. It stopped being about the substance of the issue, no matter what you think about that. The ports lost the moral high ground the minute they oh, fired those wolfies and then, and then it became about bad faith negotiating. So no matter what you think of it, Cam, it's, it's possible now that they could end up in court and if they end up in court, if there's any indication that the ports were planning to casualise these jobs in advance, then, um, then they're in trouble. Right. The okay, problem Josie. Is, the, the um, problem is, Josie, is that you think that the, the that the board and the management are complete plonkers and haven't thought this thing through. They know what their legal position is, and and it's just an absolute uh, spin to say that they were sacked and fired. They were made redundant after sitting there for months and months, refusing to budge on any um, item on the uh, on the agenda. They, they lost their jobs. But you've got Quite to admit that, Cam. I mean, to do that in the middle of mediation it's not in is the middle a pretty of provocative thing. And that's, I mean, the interesting thing about that is suddenly you've got people getting involved uh, who weren't who weren't necessarily standing on the picket lines who are saying, actually, that's pretty that's a pretty nasty thing to do when well, you get when you I'll tell you what is nasty jobs. is calling for people to uh, use violent means to get your own means, like Willie Jackson. Oh, I agree. Done today. Yeah. It's just appalling that, statement from him today. What a daft bugger! What is he thinking? I mean, that just Man, look, the interesting thing also about um, that this dispute is you've seen an awful lot of the hard left and silly left seagulling around this issue oh, you've been attacked and trying on that. to make it's just it appalling the way that well, that's right. As well. Well, and trying to, I mean, they make, try and make an issue about smashing the bosses and the, and the front line for a fight against capitalism. Well, that's really arrogant to well, use. Capitalism pays like the that. bills. But, but, you know, just go back to your numbers, Josie. You said that. Um, you know, a lot of people were out there in support. 100,000 people went to Pacifica Festival at Western Springs Park on the same day, and another 30,000 were down at the viaduct uh, enjoying the Volvo Ocean Race, and a poultry oh, yeah. two to 5,000, depending on whose numbers you believe, bothered to show up and, and carry some signs along the waterfront. You know, it just yeah, shows how little support pleasant. they've actually got. It's much more pleasant to go down on the viaduct and have a glass of wine can. You can't really... It's like saying it's comparing people who go to the dentist and people who go out partying or something. I mean, one thing's not comparable with the other. All right, we'll come back in just a moment. We'll continue this debate uh, shortly. Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater with me. It's now 15 to 6. Ben. It is now 13 to 6, back with Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater. Josie, just before we leave the, the unions and the ports, uh, the, the legal stuff that you referred to before, I haven't seen a legal opinion that uh, appears to back the unions, in fact, uh, to the contrary. Uh, the fact no, is, you talk about good faith yeah. bargaining. They walked away from nine offers. Uh, they've been on strike during the so-called good faith bargaining period. Mm. Uh, you know, they've got problems, Larry, it's won't pretty, win. it's pretty unusual, though, if you think about it, to to fire your entire workforce when you're in Make negotiations them with them. So, well, so as far as they're concerned, it feels like the same thing, doesn't well, it? Well, how many offers then, do you have to reject? You make the redundant and then replace those workers. It basically means firing, doesn't it? So, I mean, you, you've, got to, you've got to look. If, there's any, if there are any holes in the port's position, if they were planning to do this all along, if they were planning to make it non-union membership that works there, then there is going to be some case to answer. I now, I don't, I don't know that there will be, but that's certainly a risk, Cameron? and I don't think this dispute's over. I think Parslow's hollow, hollow promises about not a sh single ship being um, processed at the port are ringing, ringing hollow now. There's another ship now that's being unloaded, as I watch on the video um, on, on the web. OK. Uh, issue two, Josie, briefly, the Labor's policy on sales to, uh, of land to foreigners, uh, they want to ban virtually sales unless they can be proven to bring substantial benefits to New Zealand. I think this is um, actually what, the, this is the policy we actually have now. How do you see it? 
Well, it, it's actually a policy that, that Labor campaigned on in the last election. Well, it's a version of it anyway. So what they've done is they've updated. And actually, if you look at it, the timing is quite is quite appropriate. If the High Court have chucked out the, the Crafer sale, the, the sale to the Chinese, for example, and said it's not it's not actually demonstrating that it's bringing enough returns Which to New Zealand, rubbish. go back and have a look. Well, but they said it. The High Court said it. One I mean, even the, over, even the Overseas Investment Office only passed it. They said, look, there's only going to be two jobs Two dairy workers. Yep. Um, but they ignored the hundred million. Enough. Hold they on. ignored the hundred million um, additional market in China. It was just ridiculous. But okay, okay. but the, the, well, activism. The High Court and the Overseas Investment Office have both made. Have, 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 the Overseas Investment Office barely got it through. High Court said, "Go back and have a look at the blueprint." But that's, that's okay. That's Labor's fine. Point. We're talking about Labor's new policy here. The way I see it, and I've got the Act in front of me, that it actually waters down. Um, well, quite, Section 17 waters because, down the Act. It's kind of funny because what they're going to have to do now is hold James Cameron to actually staying here for 88 days over three years, and if he's one day short, Labor's policy says they'll confiscate his land. Oh, no, that doesn't say confiscate, Cam. What it says is... He said uh, it on the radio this morning. I heard him talk, sorry, he Josie, he said he to Mike this morning that if the benefits don't materialise, then they would think about confiscating the land. He said it on Mike Hosking this morning. Oh, well, hold on a minute. If you buy land in New Zealand and you say, um, I'm going to deliver this many jobs and we're going to do X, Y and Z and there'll be this much research and development and new technology, and then you just, you know, go away and don't deliver any of that... Clearly, there has to be some kind of penalty. What Shira said very clearly was that we haven't worked through any penalty issues yet. But look, the big thing is, look, let's look at this another way. Land in New Zealand is so expensive, partly because increase in foreign buyers has, has bid it up. So we're actually keeping, potentially keeping a generation yeah. of New Zealand farmers yeah, out, yeah, of, out uh, of the uh, way uh, of doing it. Josie, you de- land. Yeah, Josie, I've got to go, Cameron. Josie's dead right there. Um, I think it's predicted that if, if they go through with it, mind you, it's tough enough as it is in my view, but uh, farm prices could drop by 15%. See how the farmers like that. But thank you, Josie. Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater. News Talk ZB, it's now nine to six.